Okay, so what do these metal ones look like? I mean, the most famous example is the one called Psyche. I think this is not a real photo, this is an artist's impression of it. Look, it would look beautiful as like this, but you know, as we said, we don't have many great images of this. This is our current best image of Psyche. It's a blob. It's a blob. You know, this is 225 or so kilometers wide, so this is still... It's a big blob. It's a big blob, and that's the best picture of the blob we have. So these things can still be quite big and still far away, and because this blob is big. This is one of the reasons why Psyche is so exciting because we're not talking about something that's one or two or five kilometers. We're talking about, you know, uh, a state size uh, asteroid here. Now, the mass is quite heavy. It's, it's a lot less that of the moon. But it's also very dense. Yes. And that's still vastly more than all the metal that's ever been mined on Earth times millions. Still very dense. And gravity is still less than the moon. So as he said, easier to leave Psyche than it is the moon. But that's not bad. I mean, that's uh, more than, if you know, it's about 15% of the gravity on the Earth. I yeah. mean, that's uh, enough that you could not drift off into space. Exactly. So that means that if you were to land on this thing, it's actually, you can do things on it. Again, we're not going to be sending humans there, but a mission can land and not worry about getting blown off by the wind or something like that on some of these smaller ones. So perhaps we could actually do something with Psyche. Well, so here is some uh, a spectrum people took, and this is what you were referencing uh, when we were just talking about looking at optical. So the optical's down here about so 0.5 uh, microns. Yeah, that's near infrared and getting further into the, I suppose, still near infrared, but yeah. further near infrared. And this is a fraction of the sunlight that's reflected off it, I guess. Yep. So as you see, you know, we're actually getting quite reflective. Uh, so this is obviously normalized to 1.5, which is why it goes more than one. So here you're actually starting to measure the albedo and the size. It's at, cu it's at critical addition. Al albedo tells you what fraction of the sunlight it reflects, and it reflects considerably less at optical wavelengths. It's pretty featureless. It's yeah. not, there's no absorption or emission lines or anything like that. It just ramps up steadily, reflecting more and more as you get to redder and redder wavelengths. And, and that's a characteristic of these metal... Um, meteorites. Yeah, I mean, if you think which about is how we know it's a metal meteorite. Exactly, and so they they kind of can crank up the model and say about 83 or so percent uh, of this asteroid is metal. So, what are these sorts of things? How would something like Psyche be created? Well, probably a bit different than some of these other M-type ones. Yeah, I mean. As we talked about in the solar system part of the course, the um, entire solar system was originally come from the same protoplanetary disk, which all had the same composition. And the sun still preserves, at least the outer layers of the sun still preserve that same composition. For most of it, all the gas has got blown away. We lost the hydrogen and helium, though Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus and Neptune <laughs> preserved a bit of it. But all the other heavier minerals more or less should be the same. So yep. you'd expect asteroids, Earth, Mars, all to be made of roughly the same stuff because they all came from the same pretty well mixed cloud. Yep. So how can these things be so different? Well, and this is, becomes quite the interesting thing is we actually think it's exactly what you just said, except something happened to it. We believe that it started to form a planetismal or uh, a protoplanet, like we did, we talk about in the planets course. So small Nelson. lumps of rocks gather together and collide and collide and get bigger and bigger. And if they stay fairly small, they've probably still got the same composition. And these are actually the, the C type, the carbonaceous chondrites. That's right. But if they get big by 500 kilometers yeah. or something like that, they can get sufficiently hot, they can stop melting. And once you get to that size, you start melting. And now keeping in mind, this one we already know is at least 225 kilometers. So probably above that limit where you can start melting something in the inside. And if this thing is believed to have been bigger, it would have actually could have been on the order of maybe a thousand kilometers. So we're talking about something now like the dwarf planet Ceres in the asteroid belt, actually a little bit bigger. Um, and it started to actually create that iron and nickel and metals on the inside. So it did the same thing that's happened in all the other planets, yes. and presumably this is actually what's happening in something like Ceres. Yes. That, uh, it was big enough to melt, and that meant that once you've got this whole ball of magma, it's also got a, a bit of gravity in it, still not Earth-like gravity, yeah. but some, and that would cause the nickel and the iron to sink down to the middle, just like it has on the Earth, and the lighter aluminium and oxygen rocks to form at the surface, again, just like on the Earth. Yep. So that's great. You've now got a differentiated asteroid with different things in the middle and the outside, but all the, the good yummy stuff is down in the middle. And it looks like, though, 
space took care of this for us. It was still pretty chaotic in this early time. And we do know of some uh, planetismals or bigger objects that crash into the others. We know this from the Earth and the Moon. We know this from other objects as well. So what we're thinking is that we had this um, asteroid that was big enough to have to go liquid and have all the, the yummy stuff concentrated in the middle, and then BAM! Got blown apart. And so some of the fragments are fragments of you know, lightweight rock stuff yeah. on the outskirt, not much interest to us, but there could be some lumps of core stuff, the actual um, nickel and iron and other heavy elements, the stuff that on Earth is all buried down. Kilometers below our feet. It's kind of been exposed for us, that's right. So we think space kind of bit off the yucky bits of the dinner, and now we're just left with the... Spit the pip out. <laughs> exactly, that's right. So, you know, it's like a mango, right? Someone's already cut out all the nice flesh for us, uh, and we're just eating that Josie Center, but in this case, the pit's the bad one. No. And so... We think bad analogy. It, yeah, <laughs> no, no it's, it's, we think it's quite this interesting thing where space is taking care of the dirty work for us. We don't have to dig down. We don't have to clear it out. It's kind of this exposed core. So we genuinely believe, at least, that this is the exposed core of one of these dwarf planets. I mean, you know we get meteorites yep. made of nickel and iron that fall on Earth. They're a fairly rare combination, but I think we'll be looking at one in another clip. Yep. And uh, these are probably chunks that was originally the middle of some big thing and uh, then was helpfully broken apart by us. And so a lump of uh, the nickel and iron. And these things, they're very rare, but they tend to survive passing through the Earth's atmosphere rather well. So they're overrepresented in the lumps of rock we get on Earth. That's right. And so, you know, Psyche is one of these ones now where people are like, great, missions are now being planned to go visit Psyche. Uh, nominally, they want to launch the Psyche mission in about 2026. But, you know, one of the problems with going out to the asteroid belt, where things like Psyche are, is you have to go past Mars. And as we talked about in Mars, it takes, you know, at best a couple of hundred days, probably closer to a year to get from Earth to Mars. To actually make it to Psyche is trickier. But you can do a gravity assist, so you yep. actually use Mars's motion to help pull you along and give you a bit more speed, and then help get you out into the asteroid belt. And that's, that's the only way to do this. And again, you don't necessarily... Either work. that or huge amounts of fuel. That's right. But then in the future, if we're starting to do these mining missions, you want to preserve as many resources because that's just money, right? So if you want, if you want to make your mission efficient, things like gravity assist will get you out there. And if it takes a little bit longer, it's fine. It's not like people are waiting to work on it. So all those issues of food and water and needing humans entertained just don't exist anymore. So you can get to Psyche. Uh, and the nominal plan is to get to Psyche in a few years' time. Um, but it would be nicer if we had an Earth-crossing asteroid pole. Yes, it would be. The, so the, the, some collision or resonance we talked about. I mean, we talked about in the A uh, planets part of the course how the asteroids get to be in Earth-crossing orbits because these are the ones that might potentially kill the Earth. We're very interested in these ones. They're very dangerous to us. What we'd want now, normally we don't want any asteroids in Earth-crossing <laughs> orbit because they might hit us. But one that was in an Earth-crossing orbit that didn't actually go near the Earth, but close enough that we can easily get there, ideally made of nice Metals. minerals. And I don't think anyone has been discovered yet. There are probably a few of them exist. There won't be anything like as big as Psyche. It might only be a kilometre across. But things that are only a few hundred metres in size are going to be very hard to spot. That's and right. if you do spot them, it's going to be very hard to work out what they're made out of. And if they're going around every few years, you don't have that many chances to observe them. So it's going to take a longer time to find them. But if they do exist, uh, it would be fantastic because we can save that time. You can make it in weeks instead of years. With far less energy, far less delta V. <laughs> That's right.